Real quick, if any of you plan on getting an RTX 4070 Ti Super, do not get an MSI version of this graphics card because there are some BIOS issues on this GPU. So just wanted to let you know, if you do plan on getting a 4070 Ti Super at this point, just don't get an MSI version, even though that does look very, very, very beautiful. I was you, I would stay away from an MSI graphics card, regardless of what it looks like right now, because of this. That's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? I've, there's a lot of other cards out there. So this right here, an article regarding the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super losing 9.8% performance when running through Oculink. RTX 4090 is up to 22.6%. So the Oculus connector enables direct access to four PCIe lanes for modern graphics. Unlike Thunderbolt 3 and 4, which is limited to the 40 gigabytes per second, the Oculink enables up to 64 gigabytes per second. And this is an important factor when considering external GPU options. Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. So let's get right here. So the benchmarks, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. So the, the time spy 3D mark 18,635, 22,199, and then 9,758. And then this right here is 22,809, 30,429, 9,420. So this is uh, so the latest findings from the Chinese reviewer Golden Pig Upgrade showcases a setup involving a new laptop powered by the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H connected to an external desktop GPU through the Oculink connector. And the outcomes are interesting, shedding light on potential bottlenecks in the system. The RTX 4070 Ti Super loses 9.8% performance when attached to the laptop and displaying image directly on the laptop monitor, but the RTX 4090 is an entirely different story. Story, where the performance loss is reportedly as high as 22.6% in a similar scenario. The test proves that connecting the discrete GPU directly to the external monitor can provide a lot more performance with a lower loss of just 16.6%. So the RTX 4070 Ti, sorry, so the, these were the, the 70 Ti, these were the specs right here, or benchmarks, and then the 4090 are right here. And then times by extreme graphics score with the 4090 right here, which we didn't look at. So it's 19,930. Laptops are pretty hard to get good performance with just because of the heat dissipation in them. I'm not saying that laptops are like bad or anything, but next up is an article I thought was really cool and interesting. This right here, Max Payne RTX Remix mod with path tracing. Now do keep in mind, path tracing is totally different than ray tracing. It's not RTX quote unquote it's like it's something totally i really can't i'm just being honest with you man i really can't tell a difference with it i've tried it in a few games so i just i can't really i mean you can if you like wrote but if you're actually like playing the video game you can't really tell a difference if you're sitting there looking at the light lighting yes you can tell a difference but either way, man, I thought so. Anyways, it reduces the RTX 4080 FPS from 1400 to 65. 1400. As in 1400 to 65. I hear the crickets. I'm pretty sure everybody else here hears the crickets as well. So there's there you go. The well, 1387. And then we got 65. You can tell a massive difference with that. But that's off. That's like everything off. That's This is not ray tracing. There's no ray tracing here. That's insane. So actually, that's it's actually funny because, dude, I have a 14900 and a 4090. Okay? Or, I, my, that, was, that was wrong. 13900 and a 4090. I don't have an I don't have a 14 gen CP. We are gonna be we are gonna be upgrading though. I literally I actually I could even show you my orders on Amazon. But I, either way, the reason I'm saying that is uh there's a Super Nintendo mod in RetroArch that takes Super Nintendo for this is for emulation for those of you that are wondering what I'm talking about. So there's a uh B SNES HD is the emulator. You install RetroArch and then the core or the emulator is that's what a core is in RetroArch. If you download the emulator called Beast Nest HD, basically it takes these like four by three old school retro games that are like like this on a TV. 
and it puts it out to the entire screen. Dude, it's super, super cool. But when you upscale that to like 4K and then you add filters on it, dude, it even bottlenecks my computer. So it's like, bleh. so we're still, you know, a ways off from like these graphics. Cause it's like, dude, it, and this, that's what's exciting me. Uh, that's what this stuff like that, that AI has me so excited for because dude, how many of you buy remasters and remakes? I'm going to guess quite a bit of you. Now, when you have these things like emulators that are just like remastering and remake, like full blown, I'm not talking about adding a filter or like a shader onto the original game. I'm talking about taking the actual game and it doesn't, I'll, I'm actually going to put some footage up on screen for you right now of me literally playing Mario in, in the 16 by nine aspect ratio. And that, and it doesn't work perfectly for every game. So another game that I'm pretty sure I have footage of is the Lion King on the Super Nintendo. And that one was pretty, that's another one of my favorite games. So that one was pretty glitchy. Super Castlevania 4. I don't think I have any footage of that one. But it literally takes every single game, dude. And it doesn't stretch it. It's like normal. It's like normal look. It just adds like these little extra layers on the sides and it doesn't take the actual game and like flip it to like plop it next to it it's like it it's like ai it's like the autofill with it with it with the photo editor the ai photo editors where like adobe firefly um where you can erase stuff and then you just type a prompt and it adds stuff into the photo and it actually looks real that's what it's doing dude super cool super freaking awesome i got way off topic there so in the case of the so we're gonna move on to the next art because i got way off topic there look at that fella dude it's a fatty that's just it's, it's like it's like fatter than a 4090 and a 4080 but anyways max sun launches the h770 ytx terminator a wider itx design with ddr5 and pci gen 5 support so no, 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 no. chinese manufacturer max on set to launch a fresh intel motherboard designed in unconventional ytx form factor so the reason i'm sharing this my friends is because guess what something that i know you guys are all fully aware of and probably just as excited as me to uh check out is stuff like that and i know the motherboard is an intel motherboard not saying anything but there's no denying that we are eventually going to get to a point in time where we have integrated graphics actually capable of playing games that did not poo resolution. That mini PC the other day that we, I can't believe how good that thing runs. It's like, it even plays like Grand Theft Auto 5 at 720p, Cyberpunk at 720p. So it has the new N97 Intel, 12th gen Intel CPU in it. It really dude, it's, it really does. It blows me away how good that thing performed. That's outrageous. Um, that's actually the yeah dude so just go check that video out if you want to because i don't want to get too far off topic again so this right here amd ryzen 8000g zen 4 desktop apus are up to 30 percent faster than zen 3 5000g series in past mark so if we scroll down here we got the 8700g we got the 50 or 8600g and then we got the 8500g so all am5 socket types cpu class clock speed turbo speed number of physical cores, cash, TDP, yearly running cost. We have, we actually have those in, in the suit. I don't, I'm not even going to say anything. All right. So we got Radeon 780M graphics, 760M graphics, and then 740M graphics. So I don't know, dude, I think I, I really hope that we get to a point where AMD can actually pump out some like 1440p stable gameplay. That would be so sick, man. It would be so awesome for, to be able to see them do that. Right, eight cores, 16 threads, up to 5.1 gigahertz. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for the AMD GPUs. But anyways, boys, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think about this stuff. And what at what point do you think we're going to be actually be getting into the APUs and like integrated graphics capable of 1440p? I'm going to say by the end of 2024, because we have AI now. And AI in 2023 was already like, it went from like, ooh, 
little teeny weeny AI to poof. <laughs> and now we're going to do it. Now it's going to be like, boom. It's not even a poof. It's a boom in 2024. You feel me? But yeah, boys. Peace.